The following presentation is brought to you as a courtesy from Forex Academy. This is part of our service, Advanced Technical Analysis Course. If you find it interesting and wish to be updated on new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or join our community at forex.academy and receive all our services for free. Your like is also highly appreciated. Enjoy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another session of the live advanced technical analysis course. This is webinar five, and in today's webinar, we will be looking at price patterns. The purpose of the webinar is not just for you to familiarize yourself with these various topics, but also to appreciate how they can be applied to markets so that ultimately it can contribute towards improving your ability to both analyze and trade instruments in the financial market space. Forex Academy is an online provider of educational facilities to traders of financial markets and cryptocurrencies. All of the content and the material that you'll be viewing over the course of the entire webinar is educational and it has the purpose of introducing you to various tools, techniques, and subject matter relating to technical analysis. Before we continue, just a few housekeeping issues. Please feel free to ask any questions throughout the webinar. You can locate your chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. I will obviously be in a position to view all of your questions. This is a live webinar. It is being recorded and will be placed in your members area once the webinar has concluded. We will be hosting an extended Q&A session at the end of this live webinar, as is the case with each and every webinar that makes up this entire course. Just a quick review of the course overview. This week we'll follow the same process as it did last week. We'll focus on three educational subject tools over the course of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then the end of the week will conclude on Thursday with a workshop that will cover the material that we will focus on in week two of this course. The third week follows the exact same course with an end of course workshop at the end of the entire advanced technical analysis course. The only difference with the end of course workshop is that it will focus on all of the material that has been covered throughout the entire course, not just the previous three days. In today's webinar, we'll be, before embarking on our focus on price patterns, we'll be looking at just reviewing and recapping on some important elements of technical analysis. We'll run through the basic tenets of technical analysis. We'll try and answer the question, what are we trying to do? <clears throat> We will then start to dig deeper in terms of looking at reversal patterns by introducing you to the dynamics of a reversal pattern. Run through what we mean when we refer to the term trend inversion. We will then look at specific reversal patterns. These are the head and shoulders reversal, the double top and double bottom pattern, the key reversal day. We will then move on to a focus on continuation patterns. We will look at flags, pennants, and triangles. And then finally, the wedge formation, which will conclude today's webinar. So from what you can gather in terms of the two types of price action, uh, sorry, the two types of price patterns that we'll be looking at, these are reversal patterns and continuation patterns. Price patterns are quite an interesting topic in technical analysis because they very clearly indicate the one element that we discussed last week in terms of markets having a repetitive element or referred to another way, human behavior being repetitive in nature. And these price patterns are really one of the subject areas of technical analysis that reflect the human, both the, the changes in human behavior and in market sentiment but also illustrate the repetitive behavior that exists in markets. So we can, by being able to identify these patterns, what we can 
gain is a very strong insight into what the market is thinking and we understand what the potential outcome is with respect to the direction in price as a reflection of this market sentiment because these price patterns have occurred in the past and their tendency to deliver the same outcome in price action has either placed them into a reversal pattern subject or a continuation pattern. Patterns of similar structure develop as market participants contemplate decisions around fear and greed, as well as the discounting of future outcomes. Therefore, price patterns really give us an insight and allow us to identify changes in market sentiment. And this is really where their underlying strength is. They also provide us with trading opportunities and the parameters to our trade. And we'll see that very clearly with respect to some of the patterns. Okay, so let's um, take a look at once again, the basic tenets of technical analysis. You may recall what we discussed last week, the markets discount everything. Prices tend to move in trends. History tends to repeat itself. Human behavior psychology is repetitive. And those are, if we go back to these, these are the key basic tenets of technical analysis. When it comes to us using price patterns in terms of applying these things, the fact that the markets discount everything is an extension of how the market is looking at the future. Therefore, this is going to be reflected in prices. Our ability to understand that prices move in trends also makes us appreciate that we can then identify the underlying strength or weakness of that trend, i.e., should we be focusing our attention on possibly identifying any reversal trends or whether we see any patterns, do they reflect continuation patterns because the trend is still strong. History tends to repeat itself. This is clearly reflected in the origination of patterns and by extension, human behavior and human psychology is repetitive in nature. What are we really trying to do? Well, if we look at technical analysis, it is the study of price action. And we appreciate it from our discussions last week that the fact we are simply looking at price action means we need to be looking at historical price action. This is possible because price action has proved to contain a repetitive element. By studying price action, it allows us to tap into the psychological makeup of the market. And that's really what we're trying to do as technical analysts, understand what the market is thinking. It also, by evaluating or being able to evaluate trends, we're able to observe conditions that signal either strength or weakness in a trend. The advantage of technical analysis is that it can contribute towards improving both timing elements due to the fact that we are detecting changes in market dynamics. It's effective in the execution and management of trades and really allows us to develop and build on the logic of planning the trade and looking to trade the plan. Preserving capital absolutely essential from every trader's perspective and the one advantage, additional advantage that we can gather or gain from the use of technical analysis is that risk management is absolutely essential to our overall trading, not just simply for you or for myself, for every single trader. What you'll appreciate when we complete our discussion on price patterns today is that all of these components play a very significant role in not just identifying and understanding the price pattern, but then also using that information to look at both trying to capitalize from that observation, i.e. can lead us to a trading decision, and then also the effective or the improved effectiveness in terms of managing that trade, by extension, a focus on risk management. Let's revisit the concept of trend. You will remember from last week's discussion again, that the textbook definition of a trend is in an uptrend, 
we are dealing with higher highs and higher lows, or a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. This has to exist for a market to be moving price-wise in an upward direction. A downtrend is simply defined as a market that has defined a sequence of lower lows and lower highs. When we look at reversal patterns, because they reflect a change in market sentiment, they will obviously be highlighting an early warning sign of a change in either an uptrend that has been intact or a downtrend that has been dominant up until now. So reversal patterns will reflect a change in one of these two trending conditions. Okay, so understanding that a reversal pattern reflects a change in market sentiment, we can now move our discussion onto the dynamics of a reversal pattern. Let us take a look at the chart on the left-hand side, and this is something that hopefully by now you should be quite familiar with in terms of understanding the relative key elements of this move. Obviously, in this example, we are focusing our attention on a bull trend. The market has been moving higher. We can simply come to that conclusion because the market has confirmed a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. The one point that we also mentioned last week is that an uptrend is defined through support. So it's very important for us to be able to identify and establish where the key support levels lie. If we follow price action as it evolves during the latter phase of the trend, what we can notice is that prices generate a new high up at this point and then there is a pullback. That's absolutely acceptable. It's perfectly healthy for an uptrend to have what we would call a correction. The correction travels down to this point S3. We then subsequently have a recovery in price action. And the observation that we then need to make once the market is recovering is whether this recovery in price action will actually travel beyond the point that we've marked R1. In other words, will it generate a new trend high? If it does, then it just maintains the sequence of higher highs and higher lows. And in other words, the uptrend remains intact. Our observation though, by following price action, is that we see the market stall at R2, is unable to continue to move higher, and then prices start to sell off. The next piece of the puzzle that needs to be identified is whether prices will then ultimately move below this point that we've labeled S3. If that does happen, then we can clearly see that we've moved from a market that has defined a sequence of higher highs and higher lows to one now that has defined a sequence of lower lows and lower highs. In other words, the underlying direction in the market has gone from up to down. This is just a standard observation of being able to follow the evolution of price or the evolution of a trend as and when this price information becomes available. So if we look at the bear market, it's exactly the same condition that we just discussed, but from a bearish perspective. We can clearly see that on various instances, the market corrects and stalls at various resistance points. Remember, a downtrend is defined as a sequence of lower lows and lower highs, and a downtrend is defined through its resistance levels. We notice that price action travels down to this particular trend low over here, and then we have a reaction higher. Perfectly normal once again, this is a downtrend, a correction is a healthy environment. Market, however, stalls at the point we call R4, pulls back and is unable to get through the level we have highlighted as S1 to confirm a continuation of the downtrend. Instead, what happens is that we see a level of support 
develop at S2, and then prices subsequently move higher. The major development is the move through R4. The move through R4 now suggests that we've gone from a sequence of lower lows and lower highs to a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. This is a very important analytical concept that you should become very comfortable with in terms of the observations that you make with respect to price. When we're dealing with reversal patterns, which we'll move on to now, it makes sense then that the area that we will be focusing our attention on is this area that reflects the changing mood of the market, or to put it another way, the change in sentiment. So we've gone from a market that's moving upwards to a market that gradually starts to turn bearish. And we will show you how you can identify these changes in market sentiment that develop over a period of time. And this is the crux of the reversal pattern. When we talk about reversal patterns, all we are interested in is the trend inversion. And if we just look at a slightly more detailed version of the chart that we looked at earlier, that then essentially means that we're looking at the top of the uptrend. In other words, this area reflects the point where the trend is mature. And because it is mature, it suggests that the underlying sentiment that has been driving the trend higher is at a more extreme level. In other words, the implications are that all of the information is priced into the move. This then raises a big question mark as to whether price action can continue moving in an upward direction. So from a reversal, a trend reversal perspective, when we're looking at reversal patterns, we are looking at the point where the trend inverts, moves from up to down. And likewise, if we were dealing with the downtrend, we're dealing with the inversion phase where the market is changing condition from a clear downtrend in terms of reflecting market sentiment to a change in that condition that ultimately will lead to a switch to more bullish conditions. So a reversal pattern only focuses on the trend inversion. With that information <clears throat> at hand, we can now move on to focus our attention on reversal patterns specifically. We may on occasion make, or you may come across this in literature, the references to two terms known as accumulation or distribution. Generally, when somebody call, talks about accumulation, if you just focus on the word, you're accumulating assets, for example. That would be essentially a reference to a period where the market is reversing a downtrend. In other words, the market is getting ready to start pushing price action higher. If we talk about distribution, you're spreading things out, perhaps getting rid of things. When somebody refers to distribution, they're talking about a reversal pattern at the top of an uptrend. In other words, the market is preparing itself for a move in a downward direction. Specifically, with respect to the patterns that we will look at, we will start our discussion with a focus on the head and shoulders reversal. We will then move on to discussing the double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, triple bottoms. Probably spend most of our time in terms of understanding the head and shoulders reversal because the logical evaluation of a double top, for example, follows the exact same process as that we would apply to a head and shoulders pattern. We will then conclude our focus on reversal patterns by looking at the key reversal. We'll make just a reference to this as the key reversal day. The one advantage of being able to firstly understand and then in able to apply reversal patterns is that it can really facilitate and improve your trading when you identify these patterns. It allows you to identify risk parameters and we can also calculate measured price objectives following a breakout. 
This is very important because remember the three elements to a trade is entry, objective, and stop loss or risk parameter to use the more um, commonly applied term. If you can have all of these terms, or rather if you are aware of all three of these levels, then you can calculate the risk reward potential of that trade in terms of assessing whether it is worth taking on that risk. So price patterns enable identification of risk parameters and allow you to calculate a measured price objective. Therefore, we can conclude, and we'll illustrate this point over the course of the webinar, that reversal patterns contain the elements for a trade. So let's take a look at the head and shoulders reversal. Now, we saw this exact same chart earlier in this webinar. What we can do now is we can isolate some more of the data to get a much clearer picture as to what we are dealing with. You'll recall that we were focusing on the uptrend that was confirming a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, i.e. the trend was up. At this point over here, we notice that the market identifies some or comes into contact rather with some form of resistance which pushes prices lower. It's perfectly normal. Prices then find support and they subsequently start to move in an upward direction. At some stage, prices find resistance, which once again leads prices lower. And in turn, an element of support is found down here, which again forces prices higher. By failing to get above the point that we've labeled the, the head, market again finds resistance to see selling pressure dominate and it breaks through this last low. So from a trend perspective, we are now dealing with a sequence of lower lows and lower highs. However, what we can also observe from price is that prior to the reversal actually taking place on the break of this low, we can identify three important turning points. One, apologies, two, and three that developed prior to the market confirming a switch from bullish to bearish. Now, if we can just take a step back very briefly, and what you need to do is just to use your imagination in terms of trying to picture the shape that you and I have in terms of our physical makeup. We have a shoulder on the left hand side and a shoulder on the right hand side and between that we have a head. This is the visual that you should try and carry in your mind when you're looking at trying to identify reversal patterns and one, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm taking this route in terms of um, uh, suggesting how you should start obviously with practice you'll be able to identify reversal patterns more easily but at the outset um, you should try and picture what a head and two shoulders typically would look like. Reversal patterns are a subjective tool in technical analysis. So it's purely discretionary in terms of how you would observe it. It is very possible that you put three people in a room, they're looking at this chart, and all three may come to very different conclusions. One person may conclude that it is a head and shoulders reversal, the other two may conclude that it is something else entirely. Uh, it's not to say that one is right over the other. What you need to do from a re reversal pattern perspective is to understand how these formations take place. And if those conditions are met, then that should tell you you should be focusing on at least evaluating price action against the backdrop of a reversal pattern. So just think about the shape that we carry in terms of two shoulders and a head between them. And if you then take that picture to the chart in front of you, hopefully this head and shoulders formation takes a slightly clearer, is it becomes slightly clearer in terms of what you're looking at. 
What is very important to appreciate about this head and shoulders reversal pattern is that it is a clear reflection of how from this point over here, while the trend was still clearly up, conditions were beginning to change. And while we wouldn't necessarily have a clear insight into that change at this early stage, and perhaps even during the bulk of this stage, by being able to observe and understand head and shoulders reversal patterns during this phase, you might come to the conclusion that there is a possible threat to the trend. And the head and shoulders pattern is essentially just reflecting a change in market sentiment. One additional component that we have to head and shoulders reversal patterns is we have an element known as a neckline. And a neckline is simply the line that connects the two shoulders. In this instance, we're looking at the support levels and the neckline would connect these two support levels. This will become clear very shortly because a break of the neckline is what confirms the head and shoulders reversal pattern. So let's just recap some very important points. Firstly, because it is a reversal pattern, a head and shoulders has to have been preceded by a definable trend. As I mentioned earlier, the left shoulder, as well as the area that marks the head, is a, an area that is quite difficult to identify a head and shoulders pattern because it's at the relatively early stage of the pattern development. So in general, you should at least regard the head as a blow-off point, but very hard to make the call at that stage. We discussed the neckline in terms of what the neckline is, and the neckline will confirm the pattern. Now, this is a very important point. I stressed a number of times last week that what one should never do with respect to any technical analysis tools that you're applying is preempt the outcome. If you understand what needs to occur for that outcome to be confirmed, then you need to wait for that confirmation. Taking a trading decision prior to the confirmation, in other words, preempting the outcome, carries an additional risk that you might ultimately be wrong. Or rather, there's a greater risk that you will be wrong. It then becomes even more difficult to actually manage the trade. And when it comes to reversal patterns, there is no exception either. What we do is we make an observation that a head and shoulders reversal is indeed taking place. The neckline will confirm the break of the pattern. What was former support now becomes resistance. This is very clear. We looked at support and resistance levels last week, <clears throat> particularly this level over here. Once that is broken, that becomes a resistance level. Note too that the neckline also highlights an area of support, and in turn, the neckline, having offered support, once broken, will now become resistance. The pattern objective. If you take the height of the pattern and look specifically at the distance from the top of the head down to the neckline, and you project that value or that uh, uh, total down from the breakout point, then you are able to calculate an objective on the basis of the pattern. So you simply measure the distance from head to neckline, and in this instance, you subtract the value from the breakout. Now, this is an important piece of information with respect to the pattern, because in this instance, we know that the market will potentially travel down to this point. Therefore, when we consider any trades following the confirmation of the reversal pattern or the head and shoulders pattern, we can then look to formulate patterns or sorry, formulate trades that will provide a decent risk reward with this objective in mind. So you have all three parameters 
or at least access to all three parameters to a trade to allow you to make a more informed decision as to the overall potential and worthiness of that potential trade. As I mentioned earlier, it is a very subjective area of technical analysis, so definitions of patterns will be very subjective and they can very easily differ from one person to the next. What will be important for you as somebody who is just beginning to look at patterns for the first time is think about the visual aspect that I provided as, a, as an illustration earlier on. Obviously, over time, once you view and practice with, with enough head and shoulders reversal patterns, you will become more familiar with the look of and shape of these patterns, and they'll become much easier to identify.